How's it going, Katie? Hello, very good. I think we are all set to go here. Yeah. Awesome. I think, and I do have the chat open up on my site too, so I should be able to see. If anybody has any questions, I'll be able to answer them as we go. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah. And we have it up over here too, so we are evolving. Ah, that is it. <laughs> All right. Are we ready to get started? Uh, I think so. Cassie's just about to sit down. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Okay. So I forget everything's like backwards. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right. So today we are doing the little spring bumblebee and we can draw it or we can trace it, either one, um, whatever works for you. Um, I can kind of explain it as like, a little bit as how to draw it, which is pretty simple. Um, but then I'm going to do the tracing too. So if you want to follow along either way, and there is a link for the outline, right? That they can click on if they want uh, yeah, to. We're trying to get into the chat. Um, it looks like it's having an issue like uploading or something. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Well, let's see if we can figure that out. And then I can sketch it out to um, how I would sketch it if you weren't going to be able to trace it. But it's, it's pretty simple. So like the basic shape of the body is like the big one circle, two circles, and then like a head. And then off the body, you do a um, an oval, like a long circle and a long circle, and circle that way. So once you have like those main pieces, basically, it's it's pretty easy because um, everything kind of just fills in from that, and then the wings. But also, we... uh, Katie, right now I'm going to post it in the Nicholson's Peerless Watercolors Facebook group. The link. Perfect. Here. That people can want to go there to download it also yeah we'll give it a couple minutes too but yeah. if you wanted to draw it out it's just lots of circles so i can do it again on another piece of paper while we're waiting and seeing yeah, if anybody definitely. wants to do it both ways get another piece of schedule paper yep so that that file is just in our uh our public um, Facebook page for anyone that wants to go and download that right now. All right. And if you want to sketch it, if you don't want to do that, I'll sketch it one more time and give everyone a little bit of time to either do the sketch or get the outline printed. <laughs> so good. To start, we're going to do a big circle and then another circle coming off the back side of it. And then we got to do about like half the size for the head. So now you've got three circles. And then in the middle of this middle circle, you're going to do like a longer um, oval. <laughs> and then these are pretty much like the, the connections between the legs. And then the little, little funny little hand. And then one coming back from that like point where they're touching an oval. And then another oval, and then little ones coming off. And then that guy. Might have made him a little too long, but that's okay. And we're going to swoop it down under a little. And then the main part. Let's do, let's do this, actually. Let's do one more leg, and then we'll do where the... Um, kind of closer to the head. A little oval. And then the cute little hands. And then behind this leg, an oval, and then cute little hands. And then, yeah, we'll do that one. So kind of where this big circle is, halfway through, is where we're going to start to do the um, stripes of the bumblebee. So this part's going to be yellow. So this is the yellow one. This is black. And then you need another stripe that kind of goes behind that. And that one's yellow. And then probably the wing is going to be like the most complicated part. Complete faith in you. But so it's going to come between this first circle and right there. And it's going to start about halfway um, 
where that yellow starts. And you're just gonna like swoop it back into like a really like kind of an F shape, but like a bigger one. And then like another tiny little swoop. And then you go down. And then the one in the back is a little bit more simple. It's just kind of like another oval. And then you're gonna erase all of your extras. And you're gonna fill it in with like um like the veins of the wings. So they don't need to be too precise, but the 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 more like irregular the inside shapes of the wings, they look a little bit more realistic. So instead of just going like straight like straight back, we're gonna kind of like wave it out that way and then kind of make like um like a patchwork almost. Um, knowing where these go, where you want them to be, is going to be helpful when you're making the wings to make them look kind of more like the iridescent and translucent. And um, you're going to be filling each little section with a little bit more with like different colors. Mm -hmm. So having that um, patchwork laid out is will help will be helpful. <laughs> um, like that, and then just kind of pretend. Yeah. Make up some little patchworks for the black thing. And then what else do you have to do? We have to do the eyeball, an oval, and then we'll have some highlights in there. And then the antenna, the way that the uh, bumblebee is looking, the base of the antenna is actually here, but you only see this like longer piece. And then the other antenna that's coming off the side, you see how like how long it is. So you have it going up and then coming it down that way. And then there's one more leg in the back all right so that is how you would draw it and i actually drew this on sketchbook paper so now i need to do it on my watercolor paper so i'm going to use my light box and let's see does it, if anyone has a sketch template you can um yeah does that work and i'm going to sketch it real quick on my watercolor paper so we'll kind of Show both. We'll do like that. And that is the one I'm going to do. And if you're doing also, my it's really easy to use the like. I mean, did we have we done the, one of the lives before with a um like a light box yet? Uh, I don't think we have yet. No. Okay. So I love using a light box. It's super convenient. Not only if you're not comfortable drawing or treat like drawing a lot or sketching. Um, but it's, it's really convenient to do if you're trying to do something more realistic. And also if you don't have the time to do like a whole sketching class before your watercolor class. So yeah, but yeah. it is a little easier. You can do this, you can, pick, you can um, tape it up in a light window and then put the sketch behind it and then your watercolor paper, or you can use a light box like I'm using. And it's really good too, if you're not used to working on watercolor paper, if you're sketching too much on it and doing a lot of erasing, you're gonna compromise the fibers in the watercolor paper. So if you have like a more elaborate drawing and you don't want it to be erasing and redoing and doing all those different things, then it's sometimes um, better to do your drawing beforehand and then trace it onto watercolor paper so your paper is nice and crisp. So, let's see. Let's see. Okay, so now we're gonna do it on watercolor paper. You guys have any questions? How are you guys doing? <laughs> uh, it actually, like my sketch actually turned out pretty good. Uh, when, <laughs> you know, starting with just a bunch of ovals. And right? That's, that's basically what most drawings are. <laughs> You got to get the, uh, the outlines and then the guidelines. And then, you know, by that time, you're actually pretty good. Did it, is this the first live that we've done from with you in Texas? I think I so. Bubba's Lake. Bubba's Lake. Okay, thank you, bud. <laughs> you want <some> time? <laughs> it's alive. How's it going? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna be painting bumblebees, bud. What? 
we're gonna, I'm, I'm teaching them how to see. See, we have seven people watching. Oh, no. We'll paint. We can do this later. I'll, I'll get one ready for you, and you can paint it with me this afternoon, okay? Yay! All right. Will you go tell the guys away? Yeah? Dad already knows. Okay. Then go, go, go help them. I don't want to. I know, buddy. Why hey. is this one of them? Buddy. I got it. I got it. I got it. Work with it. You can take that to dad. He can, he can open it for you. That means it's good. Yeah, take it to dad. Okay. Love you, bud. All right. Almost there. No, no, no hands. Yeah, he's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> Thank so you. Funny. Would definitely stay in here all day if you could. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Do, 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 do. Almost there. All right. Is everybody ready? Oh, yeah. I'm ready. Copy and paste. Let's see. Okay. So, can you believe that this oil guy is only with like four colors? So, <laughs> it's, uh, and then, yeah, coming from this like super round and clean shape to the super fuzzy, um, I thought would be a really like good and like a quick way to introduce how to do like fur and how to make something that's you know flat and paper to be more fuzzy <laughs> so first thing we are good but actually let's see let's see how do i want to explain this put that one on um it is about three layers of paint and excuse me so the first layer we're going to do we're going to be establishing where all of our colors go and then the second layer is going to be creating our depth and shadow. And the third layer is going to be all of our detail. So it's not that much going on. So that's pretty good. So the first layers that we're going to be doing are um, the lightest black and the lightest yellow to kind of orangey. So to start, we are going to do, I think we should do the yellow. So we're gonna use the brilliant yellow first. And when, let's see, where is it? Which way am I going? <laughs> Make sure it's all in the view. So directly behind kind of uh, where the head is, it's that first big chunk of yellow. And this brilliant yellow gets very bright very easily. Oh, my paintbrush is dirty. So you want to take a little bit off your brush and see how it gets to the lightest. We want to start with the lightest at this top. And then as we get lower halfway down, we're going to add a mixture of the light of the brilliant yellow and the orange yellow. Is that the one we're using? Yeah halfway and start to blend them. And so you get a little blend between the two and the lightest stays on the top and that's gonna give it that rounded shape. And then further down, you put a little bit more of intense. And you guys can probably hear my dogs. <laughs> like that. I'm surprised it's not setting our dog off. Yeah. <laughs> You're right on the other side of that wall. They're probably, yeah, they're probably seeing like the Amazon delivery or something. Or there's actually a lot of, um, what are they called? Squirrels. <laughs> well, they didn't those didn't have squirrels. Yeah, we didn't have like squirrels running in our backyard at our last house. So the girls, like the, because, you know, they're so excited. And then before that, we were in Tucson, Arizona. So we didn't have, really squirrels there either we had more like um lizards <laughs> like little tiny lizards so there's like what are these so fast creatures like i need to get all of them yeah it's it's pretty cute 
All right. So the next bumblebee yellow area is behind that, like that big first circle. And then we are just going to do the same, same thing. We're going to get that super light, brilliant yellow again to the lightest point, diluted it a little bit, and then start at the top, which is just behind the wing and then feather it down. And as we're going down, add some of your orange yellow. So where the bottom beneath the, the leg a little bit is the uh, most intense kind of orange color. And then you can see on the wing that we have some of those yellows too. So you want to make sure that the yellow that is on the wing is the lightest and doesn't have any of um, the orange yellow until you're, you're ready for it. So it's mostly just kind of diluted in between these colors and we're just putting just like a hint of them first. And then we're gonna kind of separate those. Um, I feel like there's like a word that I want to call them. They're like puzzle pieces. No, it's not like that. Like cells, kind of. Or yeah, kind of. Yeah, like yeah, like the separate the little cells. And I'll zoom in the cam and we'll do those too. Right now, you just want to put the lightest yellow, not too dark, and just kind of place it in between, like how it's where it would be on the ring behind it, but then leave a little bit of extra that, that kind of like shifts it a little bit. Yeah, cells is a good, that's a good description. Thanks. Yeah, okay. And then, so after those two sections, we are going to take the yellow and then do all of our little hands on the bumblebee. So just the yellow, nothing else mixed with it. And these actually get black on top of it. So you don't too worried about that, but it just kind of creates a little bit of depth. And, um, you know, I don't actually know if bumblebee's feet are yellow, but I thought it looked kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're like pollen covered, so. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, that works. That's that's a good good way to do it. Very industrious. <laughs> Almost just a butterfly. <laughs> I do like painting butterflies, so there is that. I think one of my one of my earliest memories is getting stung by a bumblebee that looked kind of like this. <laughs> I I actually the only like I've only been stung by a bee once, but it was at our friends. Um, like summer, you know, like at their beach house and we were all kids and there was like 10 kids and there was one otter pop left and I got stung by a bee. So I got the last otter pop and I was really excited. And I was like, ha, ha, I got <laughs> you got stung by a bee. I'm like, ah. I don't know, but please go ask that in mind. I don't know. All right. I got to go help him real, real quick. I will be back. <laughs> I got stung by the bee last summer. Like, that you kicked? Yeah, I like kicked it in my like my toe. Like kicked it out of the air. I forgot how much it hurts. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't feel good. No. But that memory is like one of these fuzzy bumblebees flew into my diaper. Oh my God. Hey, there's a lock on this door. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try that. <laughs> All right. Thanks for the little break there. All right, so are you done with all of your first yellow washes? I'm good. Perfect. All right, so then the next one we're gonna do is all of um, the black blocking basically. And so kind of the same way we kind of went light to dark, we're going to do that. We're, all, we're only gonna be using one color obviously. So we're gonna start with the darkest. So if you do the most concentrated pigment, I think that should be dry. You might want to let your paper dry a little bit, but I think it might, sh it should probably be fine. Um, let's see. So starting on the bottom where you want it to be the darkest, and then as you get further up the B, adding more water, so you get that round shape. Bless you. <laughs> Excuse you. Please 
he's just walking down there. About like that. So what gives it the shape is the roundness at the bottom. And then we're going to be doing all the little individual hairs, uh, which give it the fuzziness. So, but as long as you have that, like, you know, rounded shape with that first layer, uh, even if you're putting like a dark amount of like the hairs, you're going to have that depth show through a little bit. So if that makes sense, that might be a horrible way yeah. to explain that, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then you're going to do the same thing on the head and then also on the butt. Okay, and then the same on the butt. <laughs> this one would be also kind of reminds me of our dog Olive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that might might need some uh, explanation. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go grab the explanation. <laughs> Describe her as a gargoyle, so oh, no. it's like a way of oh. uh, compliment. <laughs> That'd be funny. Yeah, she's also solid. <laughs> I can I can see the resemblance. Yes, <laughs> but it's a cute dog. <laughs> She also she also does not like being up this high. Her <laughs> her stature and her density. She definitely prefers <laughs> like on the ground. Oh no. <laughs> All right. So now that we are done with the body, we're going to fill in all of the first and second circles of all of the legs. And those get a pretty just, you know, kind of fill them up with the black. It's kind of like a not quite the darkest saturated, but like the second one. Just on all the legs, or are you like trying to leave like the yellow? Like the yellow, but the yellow will be there. Um, see how it kind of mixes with the, the black a little bit. But you're just gonna fill them up because we'll we'll kind of add some highlights and stuff to them around the yellow with a little bit of that the darker like the orange yellow um, in a little bit too. So yeah, pretty much just fill up. I do leave a space, I guess. Let me show you. See how there's like a little bit of that yellow still popping through, but it pretty much gets mostly filled up. <laughs> And like this front one here, I leave a little highlighted space in between the head and the arms so you can see where the, heart, the the arms comes off a little bit. But if you don't do that, that's fine too, because you'll be able to do that with your highlights um, afterwards. Kind of also deleted my, uh, the eyeball of my bumblebee. <laughs> Oh yep, yeah, that's that's fine. We could that will definitely be able to do with the white highlights as well. <laughs> so I guess once we're pretty much here with the eyeball anyway, you can see on our little reference of painting. Wait, wait, there we go. The eyeball's pretty much just good. You can make it with high white highlights too. And then for the bumblebee eye, we just fill it in and leave that little bit extra. Right? What else are we gonna do? Um, 
Okay, so for the rest of the wing, we want there to be um, a little bit of the black as, long, as well as the yellow, but you want it to be um, very light. So instead of about the first wash, second wash, third wash, fourth wash, maybe even fifth transparency, right about there. And then you're just gonna fill up the rest of it with that super light gray wash. And you can kind of come, come into the yellow a little bit just because it's just going to shift it. And you're going to fill up the rest of your wings. So they should still be very translucent or transparent, um, but still see your, your line work. It's funny, there's like a... A delay or... Yeah. <laughs> I'm like watching myself paint because it's like further away. <laughs> <laughs> like, why like is that like... I'm like, oh, I'm still painting. <laughs> I'm traveler. Yeah, right? A little bit feels like that. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Let's see. I think, yeah, okay, yeah. Doing good? Yeah, good. so far. Okay. So this next part is the, takes quite a bit longer, so we'll be able to chat a little bit. Because <laughs> we're going to be doing hundreds and hundreds of little swooshy lines, and what helps them look so cool is that you're doing individual lines and not, um, you're leaving enough space in between so they're not becoming a giant puddle. So that's the thing about, like the, the about size that brush that I'm using is pretty small, or mm -hmm. you could use like, you know, an even smaller brush without a water brush, or but you would have to make like a puddle of black with it. So what we're, I'm gonna zoom this in. Make sure it's lining up where I want it to go. Yeah, that way. This way. <laughs> there we go. And then with pretty much directly from our paint palette, so you would think it's like a lot of brushes like this close, but see how when they're together, they just create a big puddle. So you're, you're losing all of that furry texture that you want. So mm -hmm. instead, you're just going to be doing swooshies and making sure there's enough space in between that you get that texture, but then you're letting this, um, you know, the shadows that you created do like the work of the shape of it. And then this is basically, you know, the texture. So I'm gonna start, let's see. I think I go back, it, they kind of go every way. When they're up here at the top, they wanna go up and then when they're down here, they go sideways a little bit. But you're pretty much just going to fill up this entire middle section with lots of little, little furry hairs. So, um, does that make sense? Do I need to do that? <laughs> and you can see that they're not... Some of them are touching, but there's still enough of space. that they stay individual. And then you just keep going. You fill it all up. And then where your yellow and black meet, so obviously you can't make the yellow go over black because it's the watercolors and we kind of, you know, can't quite, the yellow is not bright enough or pigmented enough to cover black. Obviously black is going to be one of our darkest colors. So you kind of have to make um, it the illusion that the, the yellow hairs are going along with the black hairs. So instead of swooshing up, you're going to be swooshing down 
into the yellow section. Like that. And we've reached the part of every live painting session where I forget to breathe. <laughs> Lots of swooshing. <laughs> That's the technical term for it? Totally the technical term. I feel like I'm going to get a, a very polite letter from Nike's lawyers. Three <laughs> days after this goes. Oh, I guess it's but... Cease and desist. <laughs> All right, and then the same going into this orangey. You want to kind of smoosh into there, so it makes it kind of. And then we're going to do the same thing with uh, the, let's do, yeah, let's do the front, the front of the bay. <laughs> So everywhere, and you've uh, reestablished where your your eye got lost, Dalton, you can do the swooshing of all the fuzziness everywhere besides the eyeball. And then the eyeball will, will pop itself out again. And then kind of where you want it to be like the darkest, you don't have to worry about making as many individual hairs, but doing another layer of the black so it gets a little bit more um, pigmented. So like down here, and then like on the base of this guy, right on the down here, you can kind of fill it in with another layer. And we'll go back again once that layer dries and kind of creates some featheriness. Um, but you do want it to be like super dark. So it looks like that still has that rounded shape. So you're not like too worried about definition of the individual hairs down there? Not as much. Yeah, you can let them smush together and um, get a more of a puddle, like a second, a second coat of black. So it's even darker. I think my dog's outside my door snoring. <laughs> <laughs> that, that might be happening. And then also on the bottom part, I'm going to kind of create a, like a border of the, the black fuzz. And that's going to help it kind of create the base down here too. All right. So now we have the main body and the head. And now we're going to do the fur on the butt. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> and uh, again, if anyone have it, has any questions about the tutorial or life in general, just throw them in the chat. 
I'm pretty sure they're they're updating on our end. <laughs> I can see it on here, on this side too. <laughs> we all caught up, do you want me to wait a second? <laughs> Uh, I think uh, good. I'm good. Okay. So the same thing we're going to do, but we're going to try to keep it a little less intense because it's going to be the yellow section. I still want it to be mostly yellow, but we want to have some of those little, um, you know, that texture come into there. So we're going to use the orange yellow, but we're going to dilute it and mix it with a little bit of the bright, brilliant yellow. So you get like a nice, um, you know, brightness. Oop, wait, oop, I lost it. Yeah. There we go. In between. And then we're going to be doing about halfway down. And then as soon as it starts to get a little bit more diluted, you can start to move up to the top. And then you can even take a little bit off your brush. And so it's just barely that color. And at the top, kind of keep going. And you get that, that um, you know, variant in color so the, the the most intense is going to be towards the middle and then by the time you get to the top you've used most of the paint off your brush and then you just get a little bit more finer and uh, lighter for those little fluffy areas and then you just do the same again but with a little bit more of the orange yellow at the base and that's going to be the brightest um orangey yellow fluff <laughs> fluff swooshes And then the same on the back strip of yellow. You start off the brightest where you want it to be the, the most intense, get a little bit lighter and a little bit less paint on your brush and then it'll kind of give you those colors. And then you can start to all think about what you're going to do in the little cells of your wings. So I want to put a little bit more yellow on the base here. And then kind of like in this one, uh, one of the cells, I want to be able to be yellow. So I kind of just fill it up a little bit with some of those colors and then kind of in the shape of that cell. Maybe like that. That's good. Yeah, maybe a little more. Something like, like that a little bit. And then let's see. And then with that same orange yellow, we're going to add a little bit of outline to our. Our little leggies and kind of give them a little bit more pop. As those are drying a little bit. Let's see. So moving back to the wings, maybe let's do a little bit more on the wings. You can see on our reference one, kind of um, you want it to be the darkest down here at the base, and then as it gets to the tip of the wings, we're gonna keep them a little bit lighter with the yellow, and then eventually we're gonna add some more highlights too. And then we're kind of just gonna make sure we're filling in by kind of going in those cells. So we're gonna do that same 
I'm gonna start the blackest, go down until we reach the, let's do right, right in between those two. And then we're gonna kind of, as we're doing it, fill up the cells. And then you can kind of leave a little bit of spaces, but then as they're going, you can add little drops of black. And so it kind of highlights the edges of the cells. Are we kind of filling every cell with this gray? Or like kind of, you, I mean, kind of, but you want there to be, you know, you're gonna live, like, you, if you fill in everything all at the same time, then you're just creating a big puddle again. You kind of want okay. there to be like every other, or or you can make like a really skinny separating line. So like I've done, where's my camera? Here I've done this side and I've done the other side. And I'm gonna fill in this little one but I'm leaving just barely of a line on either side so it doesn't connect all three. And then while it's wet, I'm gonna put like a dot here. So it's gonna make each cell kind of a little bit different color, but still, you know, generally the same. Um, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna outline them too. So they're gonna kind of make them officially their own cells. <laughs> and then, yeah, kind of just wherever you want there to be a little bit and by the time you reach on the all the way to the end it's a little bit lighter tone since you've already used most of your paint off your brush okay all right It looks a little crazy too. It's, it's surprisingly what, how it shifts and changes when you you do all of your outlining and then when you do the highlights too, everything kind of comes together a little bit more. So we're almost done with the fur. We have to do a little bit more of the fluff on all of the legs. You just want to be a little bit more sparingly with them. You don't want them to, you don't have to fill them up as much, but you can see kind of coming off the sides, maybe just one side and it kind of still keeps the shape a little bit and then just has the um, a little bit extra texture. So get your black again, and then just a few, few off these guys. And then go all the way around. Like this one, I forgot to do that. And so what gives it this eyeball its shape is so now that you have just the kind of flat eyeball version and then this one might be a little too dark it gets a little bit more rounded and the way that you do that you need to get closer why is this so <laughs> the Part of the eye closest to this, um, the leg in the front, you're gonna just do like a strip of really concentrated black. And then it's gonna kind of make it more of a rounded shape. And then you can also fill in your antenna.
that that black spot just made my feet look like feet filled with existential dread. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> that black spot made my feet look like he's just filled with existential dread. <laughs> well, I'm sure. Like I mean... he's like he's seen too much or something. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and then the next step is we're going to do our black outlines on the front wing um, and kind of highlight all of these guys. And what makes it look like it's more forward than the back wing, the back wing is actually going to stay uh, more of just the pencil marks. And then the front wing gets actual black from our paint palette. And then it'll, it'll show you as we're doing it, how much more this one kind of moves forward and that one stays in the back. So all of these, the whole, oops, that was not right. Oops, that was not good. Uh oh. <laughs> Technical difficulties. You just flew into a dark room. Wasn't That's that right. the, yeah. He yeah, just, just sent me a video that said that bees just like drop to the ground when they go into the dark. Really? So all flying around, and then you turn off the lights, and they just. I'll drop. <laughs> That's crazy. I've never heard yeah. that before. And I guess it's like uh, they think it's like um, a safety mechanism, like a a bee. Like, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna it. yeah. I'm gonna like die. It's a light that it can't die for like falling because it can't reach a speed fast enough by falling to hurt itself. Uh huh. But I guess maybe flying into something <laughs> in the dark can hurt it. I don't know. Oh, that's so sad. <laughs> but lights off on these bees in like a container and they all just like form it to the ground oh no that's yeah, but that's a, probably a pretty good uh science project too yeah except for when the bees get out <laughs> we're trying that too <laughs> okay and so all of the front lines we are getting the black outline And this is directly from the paint palette and they're trying to get it as dark uh, a line as possible. And then, so halfway to where it's getting on this wing, I'm gonna do it a little bit lighter. And then it's just gonna help it look a little bit more transparent. And then a little bit later, just to separate. And you can go through the back one, but by now the amount of paint on your brush is going to be very light in comparison. So what it does is make that front wing pop out and look like it's closer to you, and the other one has like more of a light source that's like coming from above to kind of make it like you know shadowed. So this front not shadowed, but it's not really shadowed. Okay. Just more intense. <laughs> it's like it seems like common sense but it's something i always have to remind myself of, of like or like look up our things in the foreground you yeah, know yeah, darker yeah. and have more contrast or vice versa totally every time I'm, like, I'm like of oh. course the stuff that's closer is more clear or like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. more distinct. I, I mean it, does, it becomes a lot more difficult when you're doing many things on the page and you're just like okay that is much further away and you want it it's very hard in 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 watercolor, I mean, I guess in any art, really, is like, how do you paint something out of focus when something is close yeah. to super sharp? So, but having you know a good reference photo and <laughs> breaking the rules and be like, I know it's supposed to look like this, but it looks more fuzzy, so I'm being okay with it being fuzzy. <laughs> okay, so now we have our. Let's see. I think we need to do. So then what, what I do like about my first one versus the new one, let me back out a little bit. I want to show just the, the smallest difference in shadows can make a big difference. So like this one, you don't really see the butt. Like it looks still a little bit flat, but this one has a lot more depth and dark shadow through here. And so it makes it look a little bit more full. So then you come back to 
this guy and see how it's still kind of like one one tone through here um it doesn't kind of create that roundness so doing another layer kind of where i was talking about adding just that big black puddle you can do all of those little hairs again to like the lower sections and it'll kind of help create even more roundness to the uh, the shape of the V. But we're getting close. We're almost, almost to the highlighting. And now you can see too what it looks like if you do two layers of fur. And if you're doing like an animal when, um, you know, they have a lot more individual hairs too than the first, first layer versus your second layer. I don't know if it might be too dark to see it. If I change the trim a little Yeah, too dark. But it creates a nice layering effect and helps you do individual hairs a little bit more. Are you guys really filling out? Huh? Are you guys literally filling out? Yeah. <laughs> and then a little bit too on your yellow yellow stripes and just doing like a really soft black and you can kind of get some of that shadow on the base too. We are going to do our white highlights. You can use white ink um, if you want it to be the brightest. The gel pens, if they're a newer set, you want it to be pretty, pretty bright. Um, but the same kind of thing. We're going to do the little swooshies, but not nearly as many as the black because you want it to be um, just more of a highlight. So you're going to highlight pretty much individual. And so what's going to happen too is you're going to help dissolve this pencil line if your pencil line is a little bit darker uh, and you can see it through. Adding the white through here kind of just breaks that up completely so you don't see that pencil line as much and you just see more of the fluff. And then you just have them come down a little bit. And we'll do some in the button. We can just do all of the top row first, I guess. So through the black and then some through the yellow. The yellow doesn't get too much through the top, but what does look good is when you go in between. So this is your chance to bring some of those yellow fluffs into the black where you're trying to bring the black down into the yellow, but now you're using the white as a highlight that brings the yellow into the black. I like just to do, so instead of just doing them all random on this bottom, I'm doing them in more of a, I want to draw it out, like a rounded shape of the, bu the bumblebee. So I'm doing a few this way, and then I'm going down this way, and then down here. But what you can see, it's in that rounded shape of the circle that we first drew, and that kind of helps still make that, that line. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of just gives it like that, that highlight, um, but still in that same shape. And the buttons, we don't want to do too much over here, but now I'm going to break up that pencil line a little bit. And bring some of the white down into there so they look a little bit more finer. Good. <laughs> so, and what makes these legs look more rounded and more shape instead of just the full black blob that they are now, instead of doing the swooshy lines on these guys, we're going to do... We're going to do dots and a little lines down the side and then another row of those and so that kind of helps it bring 
the shape up and so it has that rounded shape of theirs too and then you can bring some on the back but you're pretty much going to do that to all of all of those and just have them come up one side That makes making sense though, kind of word mm -hmm. And then you can use some little wispy, little wispy ones off of everything to kind of give a little softness to. It's really funny to watch myself paint that. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to look at the camera. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Who is that? I love it. <laughs> okay, so the next part that helps the wings pop out a even more is we're going to outline these top half of the cells with white and so you're gonna make sure you follow your guidelines and then you're going to outline the inside and but not go, try not to go over your black and then the contrast between the lightest white next to the just black kind of makes those cells look super cool and there makes it more like a like see-through like to the yellow underneath is what's you know the light coming through and it's kind of that yellow of the the round of the bee but then the white kind of breaks it up enough that it kind of makes it look like that the wing is actually see through not the um yeah it kind of makes it look like a, like stained glass almost there that's so good that's good that works stained glass and then yeah you do a little bit down to the bottom And then the same thing on the top. We're getting pretty close. I think the only other area that we're going to add a little bit more highlights is the eye and the antenna. So for the eye, you get like a, a couple dots, and like it's going to be mm -hmm. actual little highlighted, um, like a reflection. And then I made this line pretty good with my, my negative space to begin with. But if you didn't make that line, you can kind of create it with your white highlight and then do a skinny one on this side. And then the same kind of really fine lines up and down our antenna. Like that. I think that's all of that mine that's done. Yeah. 
amazing like how halfway through it just looks like a blob. <laughs> right? Without... I know. <laughs> oh, oh, never mind. I thought that was your husband bringing. There's two of them. <laughs> Hi. She just you have snacks? Yeah. yeah, snacks are the best. <laughs> Barb said, it's amazed how quickly this came together. Well, thank you. <laughs> it does. It kind of it does look like a, a little bit of a blob and then Plastic. Yeah, just it adding also, touches. It also makes me kind of want bumblebees to actually be this size, right? I guess. Yeah. Can... Sorry. Like we, I don't, I don't know if you have them down in Texas, um, but we have a thing called mason bees here okay. in the Midwest, and uh, I may be incorrect, but I think they're like the only indigenous bee, like bee species to North America. Mm -hmm. um, but they don't sting, and they're like these little bumbling, like morons. They're like the cutest things ever if you find a hive, because mm -hmm. you can just like stand next to it, and they'll just land on you, and they run into you. They're just like busy getting pollen and bringing it back, and they don't care that you're in the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like that's probably like the happiest little bee ever, too. Just kind of yeah. I like they're really giant. They're like like huge. They look like like that big. Those giant yeah, like, bumblebees. I think those are the like. I think they have like round nests. Mm. I'm pretty sure those one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the bumblebee. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you. Do you like it? What do you think? Do you like painting? <laughs> uh -huh. I know True wants to paint the bumblebees, so maybe you need to try it too. They should do like a kid's YouTube. <laughs> right? <laughs> we, yeah, we brought some of our, uh, our paint along kits home for Seneca to, to use. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, those are super fun. But, okay, I think, um, did you guys finish yours? How did yours turn out? Yep. That's not really camera. Oh. <laughs> 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 Oh. Okay, well, thank you guys. <laughs> thank you, Katie. Thanks everyone that tuned in to watch. Um, I hope you guys found it as fun as we did. And we will see you next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye.